Thursday on The Turn, Shane Bacon and I will bring you another Back Nine holiday gift suggestion for the golfer in your life and author Alyssa Godet on her latest golf book. The Turn, noon Eastern on Back Nine Network, the Golf Lifestyle Network. Well, in the clubhouse now, we've taken away the comfortable chairs and the oh, yeah. gloves are off, gentlemen. Nothing comfortable about this. <laughs> We're going to do a round of match play. The question is, are you ready? Are you going to be like that Russian judge giving yeah. out points again? Yeah, a little bit. OK. Yeah. Don't be, so don't be so Russian this time, all right? All right. Okay. <laughs> judge. You guys ready? Jury. I'm ready. OK, yeah. it's debate time. Match right. play, right. The subject number one, obviously Rory McIlroy, we've been talking about him a lot, had a fantastic season. The question is, who will be his number one competitor in 2015? And this is going to John first. Well, I think it's an interesting question because Rory has the capability of separating himself to the point where nobody can catch him. But he was only a step ahead of Ricky Fowler this past year uh, during that incredible run. And I think Ricky working with Butch is going to have more confidence next year than he even had in 2014. Uh, I like Ricky, and if you ask me to pick a second one, Adam Scott is just so good that you see what I did there? She's judging. I went with the most handsome <laughs> guy I could think of. <laughs> but Adam Scott, also number three player in the world. So How can you, you going just with Adam or are you going with Ricky? I'm going with Ricky, though. Go with Ricky. Well, he took yep. my guy, Adam Scott, I think. Adam is 34 years old. That's prime golf age. If I had another pick, my second pick would be Justin Rose, also 34, also won a, won a major like Adam Scott, prime golf age. I think they're looking at this five-year period. Uh, as a time to make hay before they turn 40. And I think Adam Scott in 2015 sees January 1, 2016 coming where they're going to take his broomstick putter away. I think he wants to make some hay in 15. Ooh, well, we're going to have to, we shouldn't have to wait so long to find out who's right in that. Because that was both good arguments. Point each. If we're scoring, Jeff, point each on All that right. one. Okay, second one. So we have so, the first hole. So <laughs> we, you have the first hole, yeah. Um, second question. To warm up before a round or to not warm up before a round? What do you consider the correct way of doing it, Jeff? Well, there's no up. question. Yeah, warm, warm up. But if you have a choice, I like what Tom Watson said. If you have 10 minutes, spend it stretching rather than hitting balls. I mean, the, uh, the best golf I've ever played is when I've when I've gone from like a yoga class or a Pilates class where my bo my body is totally oiled up and, and, and I can put the I can make my body put the golf club in the right spot. I've gone to the first tee without even warming up, but I've been stretched out and oiled up and you can go play. All right, I have a real problem with the idea of Jeff oiled up. That, that's my first objection here. The, the second one here is, look, when I was on tour, I had a routine and I, and I warmed up. Now that I'm not on tour, not even close to being on tour. If you've got 10 minutes, go get two Bloody Marys. That's why they have two <laughs> cup holders in your cart. They'll get you plenty loose by the third hole. That's why you get two off the first yeah. tee. See, he's getting oiled up, up on Bloody Marys. Yeah. yeah, the swing all is a whole different kind. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, as an athlete or an ex-professional athlete, I'm going to have to go with Jeff on this one. <laughs> okay. Interesting, John. When we have to yeah, but who do you want to play with? You want to play <laughs> with him oiled up? True. Or do you want me with the liquor? <laughs> <laughs> right, third subject, Lydia Ko. Um, obviously, oh. she just banked a lot of money there, $1.5 million um, after winning the CME um, Tour Championship and the Race to CME Globe last month. Um, rookie of the year, but now she's going back to school um, in Korea. She's going back to the University of Korea in Seoul, studying and trying to play on tour. John? Uh, this is a tough one for me because I have two teenagers who... You're going to college. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the whole point in going to college is to get a good job. Shirley has a great job. She's, she's done it. She's won five times on the LPGA Tour. Uh, she's going to continue to get better and better. I hate the idea at her age of a distraction. You know, she's a teenager, so she thinks that she can accomplish everything. I don't think that going to Stanford and getting a degree helped Michelle Wee's golf game. Maybe it helped her as a human, and maybe that's what Lydia has in mind. But she already has the job. Let's do this one as well as we can for the next 10 years. If you feel like you need your degree after that, go ahead. She's only 17, She's right? only 17. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with John. I, I, listen, a prodigies need to do what they do, okay? You know, a Mozart needs to go play music. He didn't need to go to college, okay? I mean, look at the greats of the game that didn't go to college. I mean, back in the day, you know, Hogan, Nelson, Sneed, where's the college there? Faldo, Norman, Seve, where's the college there? 
Um, I mean, well, Nicholas went for three years. Woods went for two years. But I mean, she doesn't. McElroy she's didn't gonna go at do, all. She's going to do online. Most of her, you know, career university is going to be online. But I, I'm with John. I don't think. I don't think she needs to let anything interfere with with her winning golf terms. Five LPGA wins at age 17, that's crazy. And so keep that going. Don't, don't interrupt She it. is. She's going to get a PhD in life by traveling the world playing golf. Her major is going to be psychology, though. So you could argue, you know, you could argue that that, game. You could argue that that could go too far the other way, too. Yeah, you should overthink. Yeah, you could overthink. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. Fair, well, you guys agreed, so I was hoping you were going to disagree. But yeah, we'll have the hole on that one, too. I mean, he, he got his job because of college. I got my job because of golf. Uh, but, yep. you know. It both worked out. Get hang with both of you. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> uh, right, story number four. Sorry, I should say um, subject number four. The Hero World Challenge obviously is starting tomorrow. Right. Tiger Woods is hosting it. He's also playing in it. We're going to see his return to competitive golf. Right. The question is, um, how important is this tournament for Tiger and how much of a difference is it going to make? Very minimal importance. I mean, he's rusty, he's coming back, you know, he's got new clubs, new, new uh, coach, or, or swing consultant, whatever you call him, uh, you know, uh, new back. Okay, so he's going to play the rust off. I, I don't think, John, I don't think there's any really important golf played in December, okay? He's just going to try to get reps in and try to get back in it. I don't think it's all that important. I don't think the result is important at all. I don't think that that, that where he finishes this week is going to have any effect on uh, the 2015 calendar year for Tiger. But I think in terms of his confidence in not only the equipment, but in, uh, in Chris Como and everything that he's doing right now, I think that this is vitally important for the communication to be there, for the shot consistency uh, to be within distant visibility. You know, I don't expect Tiger to shoot 468s and have a chance to, to win. I expect Tiger to try to make some mental progress. Uh, the physical progress will come, the mental progress. You, you can't stay sharp. This is, Tiger talks about game speed. This is the first time since August that he's played at game speed. And maybe the first time this year that he's played when he was 100%. So you're saying it's not necessarily important career-wise, but it's very important to him. I think it's important to him and his development to get back to the top of the game. Fair enough. And, of course, we're going to hear more from Tiger as well later on in the second part of your interview there. So you guys agreed again. We're gonna, I'm going to have to find some other subjects that you've started. Well, you kind of disagreed while we were See how I parted time. you in case you were going to start arguing? <laughs> Nice match play, guys. Thanks so much. Well, coming up next in the clubhouse, you know Jeff hates to be rude. Well, we sent him out on the course to see exactly how rude he gets.